गुड मॉर्निंग गाइज वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल एज इट्स द विंटर टाइम सो इन दिस वीडियो आल बी डिस्कसिंग क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू मोस्टली लो विजिबिलिटी प्रोसीजर्स एंड द रेगुलेशन सो द बेसिक क्वेश्चन विच यू मे बी आज इज वेन इज लो विजिबिलिटी प्रोसीजर और एल बी पी एंड फोर्स सो द पॉइंट एट विच एल बी पी इज इम्प्लीमेंटेड वेर इज फ्रॉम वन एड्रोम टू अनदर डिपेंडिंग ऑन लोकल conditions facilities available point at which lvps are to be implemented must be clearly defined and should be related to a specific rvr or cloud ceiling measurement so the point at which lvp is implemented uh, most likely varies from airport to airport so let's look at the uh, different airports so the information about uh, applicability of lvp can be checked from the 10-1 papa pages of the respective uh, jepson approach plates of the uh, related airport like for an example at delhi the lvp procedure is implemented when either the touchdown zone midpoint mid zone or the end zone rvr is below 800 meter and ceiling is below 200 feet same way if you look at the Lucknow chart then at Lucknow LVP shall be implemented when either touchdown mid or and RVR is less than 800 meter and ceiling is less than 200 feet same way if we look at the uh, Dubai chart then at Dubai LVP is implemented or LVP becomes effective when the touchdown zone RVR is 600 meters or less and visibility is 600 meters or less and ceiling is 300 feet or less as a general rule we should be aware that an operator shall not conduct take off with rvr or visibility less than standard cat 1 conditions of 550 meter rvr or 800 meter visibility unless low visibility procedures are enforced next question what do you understand by lvto lvto basically stands for low visibility take off so a take off performed on a runway where the rvr is less than 400 meter is termed as a low visibility take off when is rvr reported at a airport or compulsorily to be reported so the rvr or runway visual range shall be reported in meters throughout the periods when either the visibility or the rvr is less than 1500 meters what are rvr restrictions so the touchdown zone rvr is always controlling whereas if reported and relevant the midpoint and the stop and zone rvr are also controlling let's take an example if you look at the rvr requirement for category ils category 2 approach then the rvr required for touchdown zone is 300 meters whereas the rvr required for mid zone is 125 meters and only the touchdown zone and the mid zone are uh, shaded so that is because for category 2 approach only touchdown zone and mid zone rvrs are required but in this case if the rollout rvr is less than 125 meters then this approach will not be category 2 anymore that means for category 2 approach even though the roll out zone rvr is not compulsorily to be reported but if reported it has to be more than 125 meters suppose if the roll out zone rvr reported is 80 meters then this approach will not be category 2 anymore and then it will fall under the category 3b approach where the rvr minimum required is 75 meter so this approach will become cat 3b instead of cat 2 approach what do you understand by cdfa cdfa is a technique consistent with stabilized approach procedures for flying the final approach segment of a non precision instrument approach procedure as a continuous descent without level off from an altitude or height at or above the final approach fix altitude or height to a point approximately 50 feet above the landing runway threshold or the point where the flare maneuver should begin for the type of aircraft flown as per the latest all weather operations dgcar 
it is mentioned that all non precision approaches shall be flown using the cdfa that is continuous descent funnel approach technique only unless otherwise approved by dgca for a particular approach to a particular runway so if a non precision approach is given at a runway and if it is not mentioned that which approach uh, which type of approach uh, to be used whether cdfa or non cdfa then it is compulsory now to fly that approach as cdfa as we all know that while flying cdfa approach 50 feet is m um, uh, 50 feet is added to md to obtain dda and why is 50 feet added let's find out now if a go around is initiated at mda while descending the aircraft may go below the mda during the missed approach maneuver which is not allowed to compensate for this the operators must add a margin of at least 50 feet to the mda and call it a derived decision altitude that is dda so that executing a missed approach at the dda will not cause the aircraft to descend below the mda So the next question comes why is 50 feet not added to the DA in an ILS approach if the same is done for a CDFA approach to calculate the DDA as per the definition of DA missed approach should be commenced upon reaching the DA in case visual reference is not available DA has been catered for this dip down so as per the definition missed approach is to be commenced at DA and while executing missed approach obviously aircraft will go few feet uh, below the missed approach initiation altitude so that dip is already taken care of and since it's a precision approach then vertical guidance is precisely available whereas mda is a specified altitude in a 2d instrument approach or circling approach below which descent descent must not be made without the required visual reference so going by the definition of or so going by the definition of mda no matter what happens if you are not visual in the approach then any uh, descent below the mda altitude should not be done that means no matter what happens you cannot descend below the referenced uh, md altitude if you are not uh, visual in the approach that is the main reason 50 feet is added to mda to obtain dda so that in case if you are not visual with the uh, runway or the uh, approach lights even if you commence missed approach maneuver at dda uh, you will not uh, end up descending below the mda whereas da is a specified altitude in a 3d instrument approach operation at which a missed approach must be initiated if the required visual reference to continue the approach has not been established what is the reference for da and dh so the decision altitude is reference to mean sea level and decision height is reference to the threshold elevation how would you calculate a uh, runway slope and what is the maximum lift so the maximum runway slope allowed for the takeoff and landing for an example for 737 is 2% and how it can be calculated is uh, find out the uh, difference of runway threshold elevation and uh, once you have the difference of runway threshold elevation of two ends divided by the runway length multiply by 100 so for an example if the runway threshold elevation difference of the two ends of a runway is 50 feet and the runway is 10000 then 50 feet divided by the runway length which is 10000 multiply by 100 which will give 0.5 so the runway slope of this runway is 0.5% 